two and one. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this next installment of the Northwest Chamber of Commerce member interview studio sessions. My name is Emily Winters. I'm the executive director here at the Northwest Chamber. And joining me today is Mr. Ken Buck, uh, the director of CCBC Owings Mill Center. Thank you for joining us today, Ken. Thank you very much, Emily. I appreciate uh, being with you today. We're very excited to get to know you a little more. Um, as one of our resident colleges in the area. We, uh, we appreciate your partnership and all that you guys do in the community and are really excited to be working with you. That's wonderful. We love the partnership. Well, we will get started with the first question. And really, the most interesting, too, is what first got you into the world of education? Well, it's interesting that you asked that my, my entry into uh, education was sort of circuitous. When I graduated from college in the mid 80s, uh, I was having difficulty finding a job. So of all places, I ended up at Kitty City. It used to be a toy store in uh, the Baltimore area in the 1980s. I was the warehouse manager. Well, I did that for about a year. And then a friend of mine's uncle owned a data tech company in Rockville, Maryland. And he recently got um, a contract with the US Immigration Service. So I worked for that company for three years from 1987 through 1990. Um, and I traveled all over the country. We were upgrading the U.S. immigration. Uh, we were barcoding their, their alien file system. That contract ended in 1990, and I was without a job. So a friend of mine worked for Anne Arundel County Public Schools, and they needed someone to teach GED at the detention center in Annapolis. So that was my foray into education. I would go there every day from 9 to 12, in a room with the inmates and we would learn math skills. So I did that um, and that kind of, I parlayed that uh, opportunity into a workforce development career in Anne Arundel County uh, for four or five years. And we had contracts with Anne Arundel Community College. So that really got me into education. I went to DC for a couple of years after that and did some uh, job workforce development training there. And I was in between jobs uh, at one point and I applied for a GED instructor position at what used to be Catonsville Community College back in the late 90s. Um, I interviewed for the position and during the interview they said, oh, by the way, we have a building we need you to manage. Well, I had never done property management or run an extension center or a campus. I said, sure, I can do it. <laughs> And that's how I came to CCBC in 1997. That's great. And what, I mean, a very vast amount of experience to get you to this point. I mean, that's a lot of people don't have that amount of experience in different fields and different types of education. Right. So, you know, what I do is kind of a, a niche market, if you will. You know, when you're thinking about careers, you, you never really think about being a campus director. You know, right. it's always fun traditional academic pursuits like an instructor, a dean, mm -hmm. those kinds of jobs. Um, but running a building is unique and there's really no formal training for that. You just kind of get lucky if you get the job and you learn it as you go. It's like building an airplane in flight. So I've been here 24 years and this is, I believe my fifth extension center. This is basically what I have done my entire career at CCBC run extension centers that run one in Essex on Eastern Boulevard, uh, the old Owings Mill Center, which used to be the courthouse. I'm sure many chamber members remember that over on Dofield, the little white building, um, and the Randallstown, the Liberty Center in Randallstown most recently before coming here. I've been here about four and a half years. Oh, well, that's a very interesting journey that you've been on with education and CCBC. Um, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and with your job, I mean, obviously, it's definitely something that you've been learning as you've gone and I'm sure have taken so much, you know, in over the years. Um, but what is it that you love most about your field? Well, I've given this, that's a great question. And I've given this a little bit of thought over the last few days. Um, so we come to work every day and, you know, we, 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 we do our jobs. We have meetings, we meet deadlines. Uh, we try to stay within budgets, those kinds of things. And sometimes when you're in the minutia of doing your job, you're like, well, what is the purpose? What's the end goal here? Well, 
the end goal here is our students. And so to answer your question, my favorite part of any academic year is commencement. So it's a celebration for everyone. Our students are happy. They have um, matriculated through their programs of study. They've been successful. Uh, many of them have uh, careers ahead of them. And it's a celebratory time of year. The weather's warm. Everybody's happy and smiling. It's like a big party. So commencement is the, my, my favorite part of my job. And I always look forward to that every year. Yeah, that's a great answer. And like you said, it is something that you know you can look forward to each year. Absolutely. Last yeah. year was interesting. It was our first virtual commencement. Um, so <laughs> it was a learning experience, but uh, people participated and I think they appreciated it nonetheless. Yeah, I'm sure. A uh, hard year to do that, but still getting to experience it and enjoy it as well. Absolutely. It would be nice if we had a, 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 a real in-person commencement this year, but I don't know if we're far enough along with the vaccinations to do that. So we're planning for virtual this year, but hopefully that'll be the last one. Yeah, and looking forward to 2022, of course, as well then. Absolutely, and when the next pandemic comes around, I will be pushing up daisies, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, a favorite moment during your career? I mean, is there one that sticks out for you as a favorite time? Yes, I would have to say, Emily, it was very early on in my career back in the 90s when I was, you know, a young guy in my 20s. It, it, it's what I call my first win in my career. I was, um, I had a part-time job, uh, a contract with Anne Arundel Community College, and they were trying to get the custodial force uh, who were employed over at NSA, um, their GEDs. A lot of those uh, folks on the custodial force at NSA back then were didn't have high school diplomas. They were uh, an aging workforce and um, they wanted to get them their GED. So they had a Ramada Inn that NSA actually leased or purchased that was abandoned off of Route 198 uh, down in Odington. And they set up GED classes in that hotel. Uh, so I would go there every night. Uh, a, a lot of older female uh, employees, custodial for, uh, force, they would come after their shift and we would do basic skills, reading, writing, and math. Um, and it was, a lot of these folks hadn't been to school in many, many years. One night I came in to work and one of the students um, pulled out a piece of paper out of an envelope and it was her official Maryland GED, her certificate, her diploma. And that was my first win. That always stood out in my mind. Uh, and that's when I fell in love with education. Yeah. That's a favorite memory. And how memorable. I mean, what, what a rewarding experience to all those nights and helping and then to see that happen. It's got to be amazing. Absolutely. And when you look at the large picture of education, you think that, well, that's a small thing. But it was big to somebody. Right. And, exactly. And everything is personal, if you really think about it. And uh, it meant a lot to to her and I was glad to be a part of that and to experience that. Yeah, that's great. And I mean, within the building that you're in, I'm sure, you know, everything's different each day. Is there any um, interesting or funny experiences that uh, that you've endured over the years? Oh, there are so many. Um, <laughs> no, so, so many. I'll harken back to the time where I had my first extension center. This is how I came to CCBC, it was over on Eastern Boulevard. It was an old furniture store from the 1940s. And over the years, the building had turned over Emily many times and um, had accumulated furniture over probably a 40 or 50 year period. So when I came to CCBC, that's where I was gonna set up shop. That's where my office was, but the building had not been vacated for a while. And there was tons of old file cabinets, files, furniture just askew in this big, probably 10,000 square foot opening. Uh, if you think about Mad Men, that's what the furniture looked like, the 1960s. The green metal uh, desks from the government, those kinds of things. Well, we were in that building for five years and the lease en ended and we had to get out of the building. We had inherited this furniture and we'd had no place to store it. And unfortunately for me, 
I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I didn't know who I was supposed to ask. And I panicked because we had like three days to get out of this building. I was in this building at two o'clock in the morning trying to move furniture. It's funny, I just told this story to our vice president yesterday. So one night on a Friday night at about one o'clock in the morning, I had the bright idea. I know how to get rid of this furniture. So we were adjacent to a little alley on Eastern Boulevard and a parking lot on the other side of that. I opened the garage door of the building and hauled all of the furniture out into the parking lot and went home. When I came back Monday morning, it was all gone. <laughs> so I got rid of all of the furniture. Uh, <laughs> That would probably get me terminated now, but that was the way to solve a problem 24 years ago. That was, it's, it's hilarious that I did that, but it was a, it was my unique way of solving that problem then. So that really kind of stands out as a, a funny moment at CCDC for me. Yeah. And in a time crunch, you do what you got to do. But I will say the imagery of the furniture is fresh in my mind now. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It was ugly. <laughs> Definitely. Now, a little bit about you and, and in your position, um, what is a favorite word or phrase of yours? I mean, is there a phrase that you live by, work by, anything you try to encourage with? So there is a phrase that I like to use, and I like to live by this, um, and I try to, to use this every day, and it's really very simple. It's, how can I help you? We encounter students every day. I think of our students as our customers. You know, they, they come here, they put their money down, and they want an education. Uh, and it's our job to help them. I encounter students on a number of different fronts on a daily basis. Sometimes people are lost in the building. They don't know where their class is. Uh, sometimes people have a registration issue. Um, we have to help them with that. And sometimes people have issues that are beyond our scope of business. Sometimes our students are, unfortunately, Emily, they are, um, they don't have proper nutrition, they don't have food. Some of our students at times um, have housing difficulties. Um, some of them don't have transportation to get to, to class. And these are all things that are important for our students to be successful and to finish at CCDC. So that's what we want. We want students to come. We don't want them to leave without finishing what they want. And Sometimes we have to step up and help them beyond our basic business principles. Um, so we have to be unique in our approach and we have to be entrepreneurial in how we assist students all the time. Sometimes we have to reach out beyond our organization to try to get them what they need. Uh, but in doing so, I find myself saying, how can I help you? And when I say that often, I don't know what the response is gonna be, but I try to be ready for whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so how can I help you? <laughs> I love that. And really, I mean, no matter what field you're in, it's such a, it's a general question, but it's so weighted and Absolutely. applicable to everyone. I mean, you never know what answer you're going to get, but you know, there's always that level of service and wanting to know how you really can help. And it's such an important question to be asking. All right. I think it's important to ask that in all industry sectors. If, if yeah. we're asking that question, then all ships rise and everybody gets what they need. Um, Sometimes when we approach a situation in the workforce um, in, in our daily lives, it's about what can I get out of this? It's always a request. I need this. I need to meet this deadline. Can you help me with this kind of thing? But if we all say, how can I help you? Then if you think about it, it's cyclical and everybody actually gets what they need ultimately. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I like that a lot. Um, now, how about sounds or noises? You know, I feel like this year, especially with a lot of people either working virtually or being on their own to work, is there music or sounds that help you keep going during the day or something that you like to relax to? Well, not so much during the day. I'm pretty busy during the day and I'm focused on work, so I don't need any distracting sounds. But at night, what I do like to do um, is I, I don't turn my heat on in the wintertime. I like it cold mm -hmm. uh, and I'll... I don't care if it's five degrees out, I'll crack a, a window. And um, I don't have a fireplace, but what I will do is put my laptop on the bed and get a, a scene like a fireplace and a winter storm with some howling winds and snow. That helps me relax and then I can go to sleep. And so I love that. 
Uh, I missed travel in the past year. You know, I had a big trip planned and we had to call that off. So I have tried to enjoy the world and uh, sound experiences virtually. That's probably my favorite one. That's a great answer. I don't think I've heard that yet. And it's so, it's a real answer. I, I really, I like that. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that right now too. I think so. Um, okay, so back to your profession. Um, is there a profession other than your own now that uh, you would like to attempt or would have liked to attempt at some point? That's a great question. I, you know, I often think about as I live my daily life and home projects present themselves to me, I'm thinking, man, it would have been great had I been like a construction management major in college or uh learn more about electricity or handyman. I think I would really enjoy like building houses uh, or being a general contractor. Those jobs are so needed. And uh, when you don't have those skills, uh, those things can become very expensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, I recently moved and uh, I'm working on a bunch of house projects now. And for the very first time, I just was able to swap out an, uh, an electrical outlet without electrocuting myself or burning my house down and you know I'm not a young guy and I'm just learning how to do this but that is one vocation I wish I could would have pursued maybe younger had I not gone into education maybe the uh, building construction trade those kinds of things uh, those people make a lot of money and when you get to uh to work on those things I'm sure it's very fulfilling to have that experience it was a success I can see it every day absolutely you know uh, you know I don't have to run an electric cord to plug this on the other side of the room because this outlet works now and I saved myself a couple hundred dollars <laughs> it's a big win <laughs> it's a huge win I was very proud of myself this past Saturday <laughs> Um, all right, and then the last and probably our most important question I always say um, is what is the one business lesson that you wish you would have known prior to starting your career? That's a really good question. And I have been thinking about that a little, a little bit uh, over the last couple of days. I would have learned to ask for help early in my career. There's something about my personality I feel like asking for help, not so much now, but early on in my career that it was a deficiency, mm -hmm. uh, a sign of weakness, or um, that I'm gonna be exposed as a fraud if I ask for help. I wish I'd done that earlier. Ask for help, ask for a mentor, those kinds of things. Uh, that's so important. Uh, we're always learning. We, don't, we never know it all. Uh, even when we retire, we still don't know it all. But um, I think it would have been very beneficial had I asked for help in my career a lot earlier. And the other thing, this is probably an aside a little bit, is um, slow down. You don't have to be so fast to do everything. Um, it's okay to slow down. Um, by nature, I rush to do everything. I'm kind of, my friends would say I'm a little impatient. So I rush and sometimes I catch myself and I'm thinking, why are you rushing? It's gonna be okay if you get this done in 10 minutes, you don't have to get it done now or you can get it done tomorrow. Yeah. You know, the world's not gonna to come to an end if you don't finish this right now. Slow down, ask for help. I think my blood pressure would be probably in another realm right now. <laughs> That we all would be a lot calmer. Um, I think, and those are two great things to take into consideration because people of all ages are still struggling with that. And I think it's taken time to be able to ask for help, but it's always that point of wanting to prove to yourself that you can do it or to others. And it's really important. Absolutely, absolutely. So my, my 56 year old self knows that now, but I wish my 21 year old self would have known that. Um, so I'm hoping that I can impart that to, to other people that I mentor in, in my career now. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ken. That was, um, that was a great answer. Uh, a lot of great answers today. I, um, it's been a pleasure to get to know you a little better on a personal level. 
Um, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Ken Buck of CCBC Owings Mills, we really appreciate your commitment to our chamber, um, wanting to participate in the interview, and, um, and we're hoping that we're able to see you around soon. It's been my pleasure. Um, I want to get a little plug in for CCBC. We're right, here, we're right here at Metro Center. We have a number of different uh, training programs for people who are not seeking degrees, and we have a number of, of, of uh, associate degree programs. Uh, we have six locations around the county and we've got a tons of financial aid. So if you're thinking you don't have money to go to college, you should come see us anyway. We're right here at 10,300 um, Grand Central Avenue at Metro Center. Absolutely, it's a beautiful building, a great place to stop by. Um, definitely give it some thought and, and um, a good opportunity for everyone, anyone who wants to go back. It's, it's a good time to do so, I feel like. Absolutely, you're so right. Well, thank you, Ken. Um, hopefully we'll see you soon. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Emily, it's my pleasure. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you.